since we have our man. It's Wednesday. Of course we do. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Uh, Teddy, let's get right into it, man. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. You got into a little groove there. <laughs> I did, man. Apologies. I didn't see the note. I was rocking. I was rolling. But yeah, boy, we got to talk to you this week, man. Folks, Teddy writes an outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. Uh, let's jump into the yen if we can first, Teddy, to kick Absolutely. things off. What would you, would you think of yesterday's action, man? Uh, well, I think it's amazing the Japanese finally pulled the trigger. Uh, they haven't done that, and let's see who knows how long. <laughs> you know, we've been wondering. What they, we thought that they were going to maybe do something months ago, and they never did. Um, now, they do have a new chairman for the uh, Bank of Japan coming in a few months. So the question is, is this a one-move deal, or are they going to do some more? Now, I think you should really pay attention to the low yesterday. Um, we had a nice sell-off, very nice break, obviously, on the news. Doesn't surprise anyone that the uh, yen, you know, um, did that yesterday because of that move. Now the reality is the low of yesterday did not take out the low of August. Now on a fundamental, just a fundamental analysis, you have nice. to think about this: was it support that held and didn't make a new low, or is it because it was way oversold and it was really a news-driven break? You know, and I think it's really the latter than the former because you have to think about this. Where were our interest rates back in August? Since then, we've had three Fed rate hikes. So all that, all that happened yesterday was it kind of neutralized what the Fed did last week, okay? So that tells me that unless the Bank of Japan is going to do this a little bit more to defend their currency or for whatever reason, um, I would say that I would key off of the low from yesterday. And nice. I think that's a pretty good support basis because just on a fundamental basis, there's no reason for the U.S. dollar yen not to trade higher right now because that move doesn't really impact things. And we already know that we got it right and the general media got it wrong as far as the Fed stands. We know the Fed's going to raise again in the next meeting. We know that they're going to continue to fight inflation. Now, are they going to be as aggressive? Of course not. But we were already planning on that to begin with. And I think the overall market is, too. It's not a, it's not an extra, extra news flash. It really isn't, you know. But that also means that if the Japanese do continue to do things, they're going to do it at our pace. So that doesn't really support the yen versus the dollar very much long term. All it does is kind of keep it from getting um, as hit as it is. So what might happen now is we start to develop a range trade between 130 and 150 with the U.S. dollar yen. So I think that's something that <clears throat> your yen traders, and I know you got a lot of gold traders that watch the yen, yeah. should take that into account. You know, So nice. unless there's an aggressive change in the Bank of Japan, which – that probably will not happen, excuse me, until uh, next, probably the end of uh, the first quarter of next year or going into the second quarter of uh, next year. Okay, so because they have a big turnover. And it's when, remember, the Japanese don't usually do things very quickly, they plan things out. They're fairly transparent, not so much about when they're going to do something. Obviously, that was proven over the past few months. Um, but we do know that they are paying attention. You know, it's not like they're asleep at the wheel, you know. <clears throat> so the question is, is now are they going to get a little more aggressive? We don't know yet. We have to find out what happens in the next couple of months with that one. Yeah, I was watching the markets. Think, what was it, Monday night? And I saw the market move. I was in the den and said, what's going on there, man? Uh, and just the timing of things, 10 o'clock at night, I think I was like, hey, what's going on in Asia right now, man? And sure enough, there was something going on. Uh, can we bring it to the dollar, Teddy, on that? Absolutely. Because we obviously saw some movement, but nothing like what we saw in the den. What's your take on the dollar right now, sitting just at about 104? Okay, well, I th yeah, exactly. Well, you know what we had? Obviously, the dollar has been under pressure the last couple of days. Um, but today it's kind of it's it's a really mixed bag of goods. You know, you have the pound and the euro that are slightly lower, and the others are one are a little higher or lower versus the dollar. So I think you have to key off the low from a few sessions back. Um, from the Tiger Report, we announced that that low was our target area that we were looking for, and it was a big Fibonacci area. There's a lot of support, but just on a harmonic value, that low is very solid. And I think that as long as that holds, especially with the interest rate market starting to sell off again, you know, like today the interest rates are slightly higher. I think that's a profit-taking rally. Um, I do believe that interest rates are going to continue to trade lower because we're not nearly at where the market factors in where the interest rate levels really are, especially with what we know that there are more hikes to come. So we are more likely to head more to, towards new lows in the interest rate markets than we are highs. And, and that, I think, is going to impact the dollar as well. So I think it's stabilizing because the media is so bearish the dollar right now, you almost have to be a buyer short term. And when you're talking about lower, are you talking about lower price and higher yield on the? Correct. 
Correct. Nice. For the interest rate markets for the 30 year and the 10 year. Correct. What do you think of the general conversation right now going on with, you know, what the market is implying with what the Fed may do versus what the Fed is saying they may do? It's interesting. I was just having a conversation with somebody really not in the market yesterday, and they were just talking about mm -hmm. fixed income in general. And they're thinking about putting some money in fixed income retirement. Not a bad time. Maybe you put it in a ladder if you're just really trying to be conservative. And this person was. Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole conversation goes, what do you think of, and geez, nobody's got the answers, man, but I'm just interested in your take in terms of going mm -hmm. out further, right? The, the yield on the tenure, the inversion going on. Right. Um, it's interesting, the whole dichotomy of the difference of analysis with some brilliant minds on Wall Street that are all disagreeing to one degree or another in terms of, does the 10-year deserve to be at 3.7 right now? Are we really going to be cutting or is it going to rise as the market comes to the realization that, you know what, the Fed is right and they're not, you know, spitballing and they're actually saying right. what they're going to do. What's your general take of, of that conversation, Teddy, if you don't mind? It. Fred's going to keep on pressing it for a while. We're not turning yet. Can you stay with us? No. Stay with us one sure. more break, all right? We'll be right sure. back, folks, because this one's sure. an important one. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets lifting up a bit with the S&Ps near 29 positive. Um, so, Teddy, as I was saying there, if you could finish that thought, because a lot of people are wondering, man, where rates go next year. What's your general take on people looking for how you maybe perceive where the Fed will be as we come through next year on their rate cycle? Sam, it up very easy. The trend is your friend. Um, we've in view, I have at least, and we can know from our shows and our talks over the past couple of months that the pullback in the U.S. dollar and the pullback in yields should be viewed as a correction for the mere fact that it's in the, on a longer and midterm term basis, it still is in a trend, okay? So let's say that I'm right and we're in a correction. That means that the correction should come to an end at a fairly sometime around now and over the next couple of months or so at least because we still have another leg lower or meaning, meaning lower in yield or higher yield, lower bond prices, and also a higher rallying dollar index. I think if you want to be a dollar bearer, and the true test is going to be when we when we get back up to those levels. Because let's say that all of a sudden, let's say that the market, the media is right, and the dollar's turned, the dollar's a bear. Well, then that would mean that we would be in a sell rally forecast. So we should have a rally in the dollar that falls short of the previous high, and that would be where the market falls apart and then starts to drift lower. If that's the case, that's when you get bearish to dollar. And I think that right now we have to view things as we have been in a correction and now the real trend is coming back at least for the next couple of months because we know the Fed is solid on their stance. So until that happens, you know, and we don't know, you know, everyone says, oh, the ECB finally did this, they're going to be aggressive. Well, they don't have the bullets to do what the Fed did last year. They're not going to be doing three quarter of a points every month or so. Or, I mean, that's not going to happen out of them, you know, and I don't think that even if they keep pace with us, it's just going to be keeping pace with us. So that neutralizes that trade, you know, and you're yeah. not going to see Japan get aggressive, you know. But now I'm not saying that things won't change come the second quarter of next year. A lot has to happen. We have to see where inflation is. you got to remember that we have a war going on that they said was only going to last two months cool. because Russia was going to go broke and Putin would be deposed. Well, we're going on almost a year and that's not the case, you know, and it's weighing yeah. heavy on the U European economy and us. So... We'll see. I think that's the case right now. Trend your a friend, lot of baby. variables. I appreciate the take, yeah. man. Um, as always, Teddy, have a great Christmas, man. And uh, we look forward to talking to you next week, okay? Sounds good. Merry Christmas, okay. guys. And to all the Merry Tiger Christmas. and Tiger out there. Folks, stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. We'll see you next